just worship him because of who he is Lord I worship you because of who you are Lord I worship you because of who you are because of who you are you are the king of kings you are the Lord of lords and we worship you because of who you are. Come on, Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. My provider. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Nisi. Lord, you reign. Lord, you Father, we ask, God, that you open our ears and our hearts to receive what you have for us today. And, Lord, I ask you to anoint my lips that I speak nothing, God, that you would not have me to speak. And, Father, give every ear to hear, every spirit of distraction. We rebuke it now in the name of Jesus. And we loose the spirit of salvation and deliverance. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank God for his spirit, his anointing that rests us in this place. Amen. He is Jehovah God. Amen. He's God over all. Amen. He's my rock. He's my shield. He's my master. He's my redeemer. He's my hope. And he's my joy. And he is my peace. Amen. Amen. If you allow him to shepherd you, you won't have no problem. <laughs> Say amen. Amen. Because he said, I give you peace that passes all understanding. When you don't understand, you still got peace. Amen. You still got joy. Amen. And that's the God that I serve. Amen. That's the Lord that I serve. That's who I worship day and night. Amen. I thank God for just allowing me to just be here today amen because he allowed us to be here we didn't get up with our mind to come here he touched our mind and gave us a mind to be here today amen amen so sometimes we think we're doing something on our own but no we just following what the holy ghost would have us to do but then he give us choice he give us choice amen 
Amen. We thank God for his anointing, and he's able. I'm going to be real with you. This message is everywhere today, and when I say everywhere, I mean everywhere. But there's a whole bunch of everywhere of us up in here, amen? And we ain't all on the same page. Say amen. 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 Some of us is thinking about dinner. Some of us is thinking about my body is aching. Some of us is thinking about what we're going to do after service. And some of us is thinking about what we did last night and what we got to do tomorrow. Say amen. Amen. And all of us has got something different going on in our lives. Amen. So where, where are we at today? Uh, I was looking in my book and I was like, I didn't write that scripture down last evening. So I don't, I'm going to read it and the Holy Ghost is going to talk. I wrote down a whole bunch of scriptures. So I want you to get your Bibles because I believe we're going to do them all. Amen. So we're just going to read because the Spirit wants to talk to you today. Amen. Because in a world that we live in, we are confused. Some people get up every morning thinking we're going to have a war. We're going to, we're going to have a war. We're going to be in World War III. Da 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 da. Always negative. They don't never get up with a positive mind. Like, thank you, Lord, for my health and my strength, and I got my right mind. I can move. I can talk. I can feed myself. I can go to the bathroom. I can give my own self a shower. We don't get up with that thought some mornings. We get up wondering what the day going to hold. But you forget who holds the day. His name is Jesus. Amen? So we have to, you know, we all get up a different way. We go to bed with different, we get up different. Some of us go to bed with trials and tribulations. Some of us just go to bed. Amen? But we all are different. So today the scripture wants to talk to whoever today. Amen? So you just need to find yourself in the word today. Amen? And just know that when God get through, you the winner. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. For the one scripture, I don't know when I wrote it down. So the Holy Ghost did. I'm going to do that one last. Amen. But I want to talk about, because some of us, and I may have to do it first now because the Spirit is talking. Some of us, are so in a place where we wonder why are they going through this and if they would straighten up then they wouldn't be going through this and if they would do right they wouldn't be going through that why do you go through what you go through amen some of us don't have a reason and we don't have a purpose why we're going through it some of us didn't do nothing to deserve what we're going through some of us didn't sow nothing but we reaping stuff amen stuff is coming at us and we stop and we wonder why sometimes. Amen? Amen? So I guess I'm going to do it. First, John chapter 8. That was not what was on my mind last night when I went to bed. But John chapter 8, because God want to talk to somebody in the house. Amen? And I have to leave Matthew because y'all sure was in Matthew. St. John. St. John 8. We thank the Lord for everybody that's watching in. Amen. We give God the praise for them. John chapter 8, verse 3. St. John chapter 8, verse 3. St. John chapter 8, verse 3. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have an accuser. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he had heard them not. So when they continued asking, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. 
When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Amen. So sometime we are accusing people. Now I'm just following the spirit. Sometimes we are accusing people of our own guilt, of our own stuff. So many times we are so angry and we're so bitter, then we want to point the finger at the other person that is doing something instead of dealing with ourselves. Amen? So it's so easy to set up and have conversation on somebody else instead of dealing with yourself. If you notice that Jesus never said the woman was innocent. Amen? He never told her, uh, they are accusing you of this. She was guilty. Amen? She was guilty. But the point is, is that he told them, how can you talk about her and how can you accuse her of something that you probably didn't did with her too? You slept with her. That's why you know what she is. Next week. Amen? And so we have to understand here is that sometime when people are angry and people are bitter and they're making your life miserable is because they are miserable. But once they had to deal with themselves, they put the stone down and walked away and left the lady alone. Amen? Y'all, did y'all read that? Amen? So when, when, when we, uh, but if you notice, she just stood there. She never said anything. And what the scripture is telling us, sometimes we defend ourselves too much. Sometimes we always say, well, let me explain it. Let me, let me, let me break it down. Let me tell you why I did what I did. Sometimes you just need to keep your mouth closed. Amen. And you don't have to get into what people say. Well, I seen you when you did it and I did it with you. I got high with you. I, you know, I'm drinking and I'm, you know, all that. I did that with you, but yet you want to accuse me. Amen. So he said that Jesus stooped down on the ground and ignored what they were doing. Sometimes we got to ignore the things that are coming at us. Amen. We're trying to get somewhere and you ain't going to get nowhere if you keep entertaining the devil. Amen. And so he says that the scripture says that when, when he asked her, where's your accuser? She said, there is none. And that's what you got to get body of Christ is that you got to say, can't nobody accuse me of nothing. Come on, because whatever I'm doing is between me and God. Amen. But do you have to notice that God turned around and told her something? Hallelujah. This is what he told her. This is what he told her. He says, she said, no man, Lord. And he said, neither do I condemn thee. Even though she was doing that, she was caught in adultery. She was having all of these relationships. But God said, I don't accuse you, but go and sin no more. Amen. So he told her, it's okay, but you got to stop what you're doing. Amen. And that's where we got to come to the point sometime. We got to stop what we're doing because then we don't give nobody no excuse. When the Lord has forgiven us, then it's time for us to repent. It's time for us to turn away. And that's what he was telling her. He said, just turn away. Go the other direction. And sometimes we don't know how to go the other direction. We want to keep playing in the playground. And we, you know, it's a feel good thing. Let me tell you something. It's some scorpions off in the playground. Amen. And I don't know about y'all but once you've been bit a few times they can mess around and bite you and you could die amen and so I don't know about you church huh? but if I was you if God declared my name and, and all of the stuff need to be done because I'm yes I'm guilty but God said I'm not going to look at your mouth I'm not going to look at what you've done huh? I'm not going to point my finger at you and I'm not going to let nobody else point their finger at you but you got to turn away you got to repent you cannot go back and play in the same playground you've been playing in I don't know who the Holy Ghost is talking to but he said to, he told her to turn and turn mean repent and repent means it's ask the father to forgive you and when you ask the Lord to forgive you you don't go back amen you don't turn back you don't look back you ask the Father to forgive you. You said, I repent of it, but repenting is just a part of it, church. Uh, you got to forgive, amen? You got to forgive yourself. You 
should be feeling that kind of way. Amen. You should be feeling some guilt. You should not be sleeping at night. You should not be eating the best food and you have your mind on food. But when you are guilty, you have no rest if you're in the Holy Ghost. He said to turn away, to ask for forgiveness. Amen. Now don't go running to nobody that you didn't do wrong and say, forgive me. Now, you know, if the Holy Ghost don't tell you to do it, just don't go. Amen. I'm talking real because you might get killed. Because he's dealing with you, he ain't dealing with them. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Amen. That's the Holy Ghost. <laughs> he said, I don't condemn you, but go and sin no more. Amen. Amen. Now we got to think about this thing now. We sometimes why we want to play in the playground and we want to continue to do what we want to do. Let's go look at Genesis 19. Let's look, since we all up in here, let's go look at Lot's wife. Amen. Genesis in the beginning. Sin been on the world for a long time, but it ain't got to be in you. Genesis 19 and 26. Amen. Genesis 19 and 26. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Now, some of us, we got to see, now just look at the one that we just read when he told her, don't look back, turn away from your sins. Now, he told Lot's wife, he delivered her out of the city of Solomon Gomorrah. Amen? And it's a whole lot of Solomon Gomorrah walking the land today. Come on, church. Amen? Bestiality homosexuality and now they telling kids that you can be an animal now I ain't got there yet I ain't understanding the full story but I'm here to tell all of you children up in New Jerusalem you are not born of an animal and you will not become an animal amen see we open our spirit up to all kind of garbage out there I, 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 I'm just like come on let's get back to we're humans amen and, and, and sometimes we just need to be over there with Adam and Eve and take a good look at ourselves and cover ourselves up and turn from our wickedness. Amen. I was, I, I was looking at a lady, that, her husband, they got a church, and yesterday just took me somewhere. And she had this blouse on, and it was tied up on the side, and her neighbor was showing, you know, all of this. And then the sister was there, and she had some britches on, and all of this was clear, and nothing on up under that and I'm like wait a minute who are you who are you selling here come on church God told Eve and Adam to cover it up you can be sexy with some clothes on cover it up head to toe <laughs> next week I'm getting back to the word he told her what don't look back the woman that was caught in adultery, he told her to turn. Don't look back. Don't go back. But her heart was in Solomon and Gomorrah. See, where your heart is at, the words say that's where you're going to be also. So, you know, I may, I may be in church right now, but if my heart is at the restaurant, then guess where you at? Come on. She was out of the camp, out of the city, with her husband and her daughters, but her heart was still in Solomon Gomorrah. Come on. So God is saying what the church needs to do is search your heart and see really where you're at. Am I walking with the Lord or am I just talking about him? Is he in my heart or is he just on my lips? Amen. Amen. Because I'm telling y'all, in the times that we're living in today, I've never in my little 67 years seen so many young people dying. Come on. I want to say, what is going on? Where is your heart at today? Lot's wife's heart was in sin. When she looked back, he says, I'm going to make her an example of looking back. And she turned into a pillow of salt. So when God say turn, you better turn. 
And when he said, don't look back, in other words, don't you even lust. Don't even think about what you used to do. Just keep on walking toward God. Turn back. Amen? Because here we are, we have to understand, church, that there is a place of to repent. And to repent, we, you know, we use that word repent and love. It's just a word now. It ain't got no meaning to it. Oh, I repent it, and you jump right back into it. Oh, I love you, but you go on and do me wrong. That quick. It's just a word. It doesn't mean anything anymore. But to repent, let's go to Acts 3 and 9. It's time to not look back. We've been looking back too long. Come on, y'all. We, we didn't got old around here looking back. I'm talking to my generation. Amen? Because I don't know if any other generation in here. How old are you, brother? All right. You, brother? Am I the oldest person in here, Vaughn? 69. It's like, it's like wait a minute. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Where we at? Okay. It's time for us to stop looking back. We, you know what? It didn't get you nowhere. So why you keep looking back? Where we at? Acts 3 and 9. Go ahead. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Go ahead. 11. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon, greatly wondering. Amen. You can read nine again. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. All right. So he was what? He was laying, he repented, and he was made whole. When we repent from our heart, we're made whole. In other words, I ain't even trying to look back. I don't even want to talk about it. I don't want to discuss it. It is not in my memory bank. Amen? And if it's there, it's there to be a testimony for somebody to get delivered. Amen? Because when our past become our future, we held up. We're moving, but we're not moving. Amen? It's like waiting on the rain, and it never rains. Amen? So let's go to John 20 and 23, because, I, I mean, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, and we know that one because that's our scripture. Second Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, he says, if any man be where? In Christ. Now, if you're in Christ, now some of us, now I don't want to discourage some of y'all, because some of y'all saying, well, what's the use of me keep serving God? We're dying daily. But when we die in daily, some of us are dying Slow, and some of us are dying fast. It's according to how your end go in. Amen? But we're dying daily, but as I'm dying, I'm not lusting back. And if the enemy come in with the enticing spirit, he said, resist the devil, and he'll flee. Amen? He said, therefore, if any man, that's any of us, be in Christ, we have become a new creature. Amen? Old things are passed away. Whatever your spirit is, that demonic, unclean, unholy spirit was, it does not exist today. Amen? It does not exist because why? I don't exist because now I'm a new creature. Amen? It's giving up the things of this world. That's what a new creature is. Amen? So we're not being deceived. And all things, he said, become new. Not all the things at one time, but daily they will begin to come new. But first of all, we got to surrender everything over to God. We can't be looking and pointing our fingers at this one and that one and what they doing. Get it right here. Because the men that had the stones that were chucking them and going to throw them at the woman was guiltier than she was. 
Hallelujah. John 20. I'm almost finished. I pray this message is helping y'all today. Amen. Because, honey, it's time to stop looking back. It's time to begin to go forward for the blessing that God has for you. For the things that the Lord has for you. If you, he said, press toward the mark of the high calling. And that means it's a little bit of work. But I can get there. Because I'm not looking back. I'm not allowing the things that helped me down the past 20 years to hold me down anymore. He never said you're going to get a new car and a new house. You're going to get a new mind. And a new heart. Because some of us get lost in material stuff. John 20, 23. John 20 and 23. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. Say it again. Read it again. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. Now it says, let it go or keep it. That's what it's saying. Either you choose to, it, you choose to stay in that place of, of, of a lack and being without and miserable and unhappy in that place of sin, or you choose to let it go. That's up to you. Sometimes we want to blame mama and daddy and sister and brother and husband and wife and the neighbor across the street and, and somebody that was in your past for your stuff. No, it's you. You have to make a, a serious decision. I'm going to live a better life, and this better life that I'm going to live is going to be for me. It's going to be for me. Amen? You got to stop waiting on your friends to help you to sin. He said a new thing. A new thing I'm going to do. See, we got to be wise if people got a scripture on their tongue all the time and a shake in their body. You get caught up in that stuff. That form of godliness. No power. Amen? You better take a look. Okay, let me see. Let me look, let me look at your life. Say amen. He said, they didn't have eyes to see, let them see. And they didn't got ears to hear, let them hear. A heart to receive. See, we're deceived by words. Well, they talk good. Mm-hmm. Devil do too. Every, every piece of food I've seen that looked good sure didn't taste good. Amen. I was like, ooh, don't that look good? Then you bite it like, ooh. That's how the devil is. He says it's up to you to let it go or it's up to you to keep your past. Now, I don't know about y'all, but all of us up in this church are really looking for a better life. But it's up to you to let it go to move to where you're going. Don't blame the accusers. Amen. Don't blame those that are pointing fingers at you. Don't blame those that are in your past that help you do what you're doing. Blame yourself. The woman that was caught there, she said, I, I'm just going to stand here and take these rocks because I'm guilty. See, first thing you got to admit is your guilt. Because if you don't never admit your guilt, you will never get free. Because you first got to realize I'm bound up up here. And my heart needs to be loose. He said, you worship me with these lips, but your heart is far from me. See, sometimes when God moved people out of your life, you say, well, they ain't talking to me, no, and they ain't, it. honey, you all holler, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Come on. Because they was a hindrance in your life. John 7 and 53. Did we do that already? That ain't the one I want. I want Psalms 105. And 15. Church, if we don't stand up for Christ, who's going to stand up? 
If we don't be children of God, who's going to be the children of God? Amen? Psalms 105, verse 15. Saying, touch not mine anointing, and do my prophet no harm. Now, this is what we need to understand. Who are we? Amen? Now, read Matthew 18, verse 6. Because I would need to put these together. Matthew, Matthew 18. 18 and 6. Yes. But who shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me? It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Okay. Now, some of us think the little ones he just talking about, that baby right there, are these little children. Let me tell you who I am. I'm God's little child. Come on. Amen? I am God's little child. He said it would be better for you to put a millstone around your neck than to mess with one of God's children. Amen? So that's why when they were standing there with them stones chunking rocks, he had to remind them of theyself. Even though she was in adultery, he said, I don't accuse you because you are mine, but go and sin no more. So we have to understand is that the Lord is saying to the church, y'all are my children, and I'm protecting y'all just like I protected that woman that was caught up in, in, in adultery, but I need y'all to understand my love I have for you. I would prefer that a man would commit suicide than put his hand on you. And he says, touch not my prophets. And what? My anointed. And do them no harm. Amen? This thing is serious, church. We are serious to the Lord. We got to understand we're just not a part of the group. Guess what? I am the group. Come on. Amen. And until you see yourself being either over it or in it or under it, you ain't going to amount to nothing. And if you over the group, you ain't never in it. Come on. Somebody texted me something this week with some foolishness. I said, I ain't going to stoop that low. I'm not going to even answer. And I said, Lord, just let her stew until she can't take it no more because I didn't say nothing. Because I'm over it. I'm not a part of it. And the Lord is telling the church here, you are my little ones. And I am protecting you as I protected that woman. And I'm watching over you. But you got to make a decision who you going to serve. And if you going to turn away from your sins. And turn away from the things that are not of me. And begin to walk in the holiness that you need to walk in. Because I can keep protecting you as I protected the woman that was caught in adultery. But he gives us the rule too. Turn away. Repent. Walk away. Sin only takes you so far. And then after a while, it becomes a headache. It get on my nerves. I don't like you no more. I don't like it no more. But when you stay with the Lord and you turned away, there ain't nothing left but joy and peace. That's all that's left for the body of Christ. Amen? And so we have to, we have to understand that the Father is saying to us, us we're his and if somebody mess with you I will deal with them come on but you have to stay in a place of turning away you have to stay in a place of asking for forgiveness you need to stay in a place of repentance and you need to keep an humble heart because God wants to bless you God is saying also I'm about to get tired of people messing with my body Come on. I'm about to say you're going as far as you're going to go. Because I'm about to do something with you. Amen? See, Jesus said, I'm trying to ignore them by writing in the sand. But they don't want me to throw the sand at them. Go back and read it. He said, I'm really trying to ignore them. Because they're messing with you. He said, but if they keep it up, they better off dead. 
they better off. And so we got to see this body of Christ. We got to see it for what God is saying is that we got to turn away. The world is turning every day. You go to the store, you try to find something, you can't find it. I went to, I don't know how many stores down here, Walmarts and Walgreens and Fries and all the little stores and, 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 and I don't know how many, every store I walked into, I was looking for some uh, cod liver oil tablets. I'm all the way up north hunting for some cod liver oil tablets when I was up there. I said, well, I might as well just go to Sprouts and spend all this money. Sure enough, they had three bottles. See, we're going to start looking for some earthly things that we can't find because y'all need to know we're living the last days. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something. He ain't coming tomorrow. He ain't coming next year. I ain't going to say he even come in the next five years. I don't know, but he's coming. Because there's so many things got to be fulfilled. But he said this is the beginning of sorrow. The beginning of sorrow. And there are people who are just pushing World War III. You can't even deal with the gas prices and the food prices. How you think you're going to deal with a war? They ain't thought about that. But my Bible tells me I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. And if we don't start as the body of Christ, start turning away from our sins and repenting whatever's going to take place on this earth, you ain't going to be able to handle it if you ain't walking with, Lord, with the Lord. Yes, we are tempted, but we can repent. We are finger pointers, but we can stop. We do get out of order sometimes. But we need to ask the Father to forgive us because the hour is drawing near. The Lord needs us to be blessed. He's saying, you are my child. You're my little one. He said, when I come back, I'm coming back for the bride. I heard a lady said the other day, and y'all just stay with me because I need y'all to get this. She says, I, I go looking for my husband. I don't care if I go to McDonald's. She said, I go cute as I do if I'm going out to the club. You know what? And that's the way we ought to be because we don't know when the Lord going to come. We ought to be ready all the time. All the time. But no, we want to we turn back. And we want to look back. And we want to get back in that little pan of sand. And when I was speaking about scorpions, the Bible said that's what hell feels like. A bed of scorpions every day of your life. And I've said this since the first time I got bit. Everybody in the world need to be bit one time. I bet you you'll think about heaven. I'm telling you, it's the worst bite you can have. We want to be ready. We want to be the bride when Jesus come through the eastern sky. We want to be ready. But we cannot be ready if we're constantly looking back to where we were. And the Lord already delivered us. He delivered us on the cross. Amen. He delivered us when he gave us the keys, the death, hell, and the grave. He gave us all power. We have the power over ourselves. That's what the scripture we just read. Either you're going to stay with it or you're going to turn away. Make your choice today. Choose whom you're going to serve this day. Make a decision. And we sit by and we watch people just make a freeway to hell. You know why? We're not an example. Somebody's watching you that ain't going to never tell you. You're the only Bible they have. You're the only key they have to getting into the kingdom of God. And we live this wicked, wicked, wicked life. A friend of mine told me, I said, I want to come hear you sing. She sang at a bar. I said, I want to come here. You say, and she said, well, I need you to know it's a bar. I said, girl, I go to the bar. When I go to go to up the street to the restaurant, they got a bar in there. Everywhere you go, it's a bar. Come on. You got to know I'm in this world, but I'm not a part of it. You're going to be in places, 
but it's what you are when you're in that place. It's who you are, and you don't know who you are if you have not gotten out of the bed of sin and turned away. I don't know who God talking to. Maybe talking to me. But I'm going to tell you something. He pleading with you right now. <laughs> I see you, sister. <laughs> so what he's saying to us is that we need to repent. We need to know that we're his children. And he ain't going to allow nobody to put their hands on him. He stood there with that lady caught in adultery, and he knew she was an adulteress. But he said, you better not touch her. He just said, if you ain't got no sin in your life, then go ahead on. And they were all guilty. We're all guilty. But we got to clean ourselves up. The word today is that it's up to you. God is saying, you're my little one. And, but not nobody put their hands on you. But not nobody touched you. But you need to make a decision. And that woman made a decision right there. He said, go and sin no more. I don't want to make this about sin. I want to make it about a relationship with God. Get your relationship with the Lord. Where you can turn away. And not go back to an old lifestyle that you didn't profit nothing from. Nothing. The joy of the Lord is your strength. We all need each other. Because God told Adam, it ain't good for you to be alone. Let me give you a woman. He took a rib out. That's why you better make sure you got the right rib, honey. I'm just saying, you better make sure. You better make sure. Don't let your eyes deceive you. That rib may be the ugliest thing walking, but it fits. Amen. It fits. He said it's not good for man to be alone. Amen. So we all need somebody. But you don't need people that's pointing their finger at you. And they more messed up than you are. And they helping you to stay messed up. But hear the Lord today, church. Because the Lord is on his way back. And some of us won't see him come through the eastern sky. But you're going to see him. It is time to turn away from the things that you've been bound up with for years. And say, Lord, I'm turning the page. It's a new life. When I was sitting here and we were in praise, the Lord says, and I know we've heard this and we've heard this and we've heard this and we've heard it. We've been hearing it for years. He said, I'm sending a new anointing. I'm sending a new anointing. A new anointing. There's a new move of the Spirit of God. Amen. Yesterday I was going through something in my body, and I was just, I came past by the church, and, and I was just like, Lord, I just need you to do something. And this girl picked up the phone and called me, and she said, Ellen, you've been on my mind all day long. And I was just driving up the little street right here, and I just began to weep when she said it. I said, let me, let me pull this car over because you can pray because I'm in an emotional state. And she just began to pray. See, God is an on-time God. And when he says, I will watch over my little ones, he was watching over me at that moment of my moment I was having. At my moment I was having. So we got to come to this conclusion in life. I don't care if you're grieving. I don't care if you're sick. I don't care if you're wounded, broken, whatever you're going through, you need to understand you're his child. And I always tell the Lord, if my earthly father did good for me, how much more are you going to do? He'll do so much more. And the Lord wants to do more for us, church. But we got to say no to the things of this world. We got to say no. Because we can get fully blessed. Fully blessed. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord of your life and you're not saved, you can come to the altar, but you need to give your heart to the Lord. If you're tired of sinning, he says it's up to you. Lament, it's up to you. 
and you want to give your heart to the Lord, the doors is open. Make Jesus your choice because we got to turn away. It don't matter to you what people say about you, what people do, because I'm his child. But you are not going to always be his child if you don't turn and walk away from the things that fulfill your flesh. And that's what it is, your flesh. But it's your spirit, man, that you want to be complete. It's your spirit that you want to have that joy and that peace. Lift your hands to the Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask your blessing over your people. Lord, we ask you, Father, that if they're sitting on the bench or they're listening, Father God, in on the, on the internet, Lord, that we repent of our sins. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us. Fill us, O oh God, with your Holy Spirit, that we live holy and righteous until you come. And so, Father, we ask your blessing, a miracle blessing, right now, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. How many received that word today? Amen. How many know that we are God's children and he does not condemn us? His job is to save us. Amen. And he wants to save us, not condemn us. So what Pastor was saying today, don't let no man put their mouth on us because we all have sin and fall short of the glory of God. And just because we fell once don't mean we have to fall twice. Amen. Go and sin no more. In other words, even though you did it once, don't mean you have to do it twice. If God delivered you from it already, don't run back into it. So go and sin no more. Put your hands together for our pastor. Put your hands together for that word. Amen. Amen. We thank God for that word. We thank God for the wisdom that God has put in our pastor. Amen. And the knowledge and the anointing and the Holy Ghost that's up in her. Amen. That we may receive the words that God has given us through her. Amen. Anybody need prayer for anything? Anybody need prayer for anything before we leave? Amen. If nothing, don't forget this Saturday. This Saturday at 6 p.m., we're having a mother and daughter's banquet. Mother and daughter's banquet. Amen. Like Pastor said, you may not have a daughter, but you are a daughter. Come anyway. Amen. Amen. You may not be a mother, but that means you are a daughter. So come anyway. Amen. So all you ladies and bring your children, your, your, your children, you're all welcome to be here this Saturday at 6 p.m. We'll be right here at the church. Well, y'all will be right here at the church having the mother and daughter's banquet. Amen. If nothing else, and also don't forget choir and praise team meet this Wednesday. Choir and praise team meet this Wednesday. And then the following Saturday, we will be meeting with the youth choir. The youth choir sings next Sunday. So, well, I'll figure that out. I'll call all the parents. Amen. Please stand to your feet. Please stand to your feet. Oh, real quick, before we stand to your feet, you sit down. Let us hear from our guests. Amen. We have a young lady and a young gentleman. If you guys can just stand and say hi. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you guys for being here with us today. Sister Carol, Carolyn, let me see. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen.
Amen. Amen. To the young lady in the back row, and the, and the young man, you can just stand and say hi. Tell us your name. Don't be embarrassed. Your name, son? Amen. God bless you guys for being with us today. Amen. 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 Stand to your feet. We're going home. Amen. Good, good to see you. Your birthday? Amen. Amen. Good to see each Good to see each and every one of you guys in the house today. Amen. Anybody had a birthday this week besides Trey? We got two birthdays. Anybody else? Amen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Dear God, Lord, we thank you for each and every one that's in the house today, God. Lord, we actually touch those that drove near and those that drove far. And God, keep us in all your ways throughout this week. Lord, touch our pastor, God, and part back into her what she's given out. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>